Hello there. I always try to keep a very close check on everything that goes on in the big harbor. Well, it's my job as harbor master to know where all the ships and boats are and to make sure things are running smoothly. But can I tell you a little secret? You know what I really love? Watching the tugboats. <laughs> They're special. I mean, Theodore always tries his best and he's very friendly. Emily is wise and a very good worker. George is sometimes a bit of a grump, but under those big bumpers, he's a true blue friend. <laughs> Hank's just a clown. He always makes me laugh. Foduck. Now, Foduck is special, well, just because he's Foduck. And you know, he found that out the day he got his V word. Come to think of it, that was a special day for the whole harbor. Hank and Foduck were just floating along one lazy afternoon when Hank said, Foduck, what's the deepest place in the whole world? Now, all the tugs know that Foduck is very smart and knows a lot of things, but that's a hard question. Finally, Foduck had the answer. The Mariana Trench is a deep, deep hole way down in the bottom of the ocean. It's so deep, you could put the tallest mountain in the world in it, upside down. Wow, said Hank. Mary Ann's Trench. Fodak, you know everything. But Fodak wasn't so sure about that. You see, he was about to get his V word, just like Emily the Vigorous or George the Valiant. A V word was there to tell the world that you're a special tug, ready to leave the harbor and go out on the ocean all alone. The only trouble was, Fodak didn't know what was so special about being him. Hank, he asked, What's the most special thing a tug can be? Hank thought and thought. Smart! That's the most special thing a tug can be. Well, Fodak really liked that. Now all he had to do was think of a, a V word for smart. Hank had to go move a barge. Hank, you better tuck in your anchor, said Fodak. It seemed that Hank was always forgetting to tuck his anchor in. Oh, thanks, Fodak. <laughs> it's a good thing you saw that. Later, Fodak was cruising along, watching for a, a rotten old part of a dock that looked like it might fall into the water. Now that could be dangerous. Look what I found, announced George suddenly. There was a big stack of old wooden orange crates in George's lifeboat. Hmm, said Fodak. They must have fallen off a cargo ship. George roomed his engine proudly. And that was when Fodak noticed a few sparks flying out of George's smokestack. George? You better have your engines checked, he said. Oh, what's a couple of little sparks to the world's toughest tug, replied George. Just then, Fodak's radio crackled out a warning. Strong winds were coming. Maybe a storm. I better go warn everyone, said Fodak. He was about to go when he stopped and said to George, George, what do you think is the most special thing a tug can be? That's easy, roared George. Strong. Fodak thought to himself. Hank said smart, and now George said strong. I wonder which is the most special thing to be. The next day, Fodak and Emily were tugging a cargo ship into port. Fodak called Emily, pulling in front. Emily, is being strong the most special thing a tug can be? Or is it being smart? Being a good worker, she called out. That's the most special thing a tug can be. Another thing that is special to be, groaned Fodak. Now he was really confused. Suddenly, Fodak's special equipment made a poing-poing sound. Emily, he called. Be careful, there's something in the water. Fodak could see it was right in front of Emily. Well, because of Fodak's warning, Emily managed to steer clear of an accident. Part of that old dock must have blown off in the storm last night, said Fodak. It's a good thing you were here, Fodak, said Emily. You're always watching out for us. Well, sure enough, when Fodak went to look, some of that old dock had blown right off. 
But all Frodo could think about right now was all the things his friends had been telling him about being a special tugboat. Which was the best, he wondered. Smart? Or strong? Or a good worker? Hello, Frodo. It was Theodore. Maybe he can help me, thought Frodo. Theodore always has good ideas. Theodore, what do you think is the most special thing a tug can be? He asked. I know, said Theodore. A team working together. George and Emily work together as the two pullers, and Hank and I work together as the two pushers, and you're... you're the... Hmm. The two tugs didn't say anything for a moment. Then Fodak finally said, But I usually work alone, Theodore. All by myself, thought Fodak sadly. Theodore turned for work. Fodak told him he was floating very low in the water. Uh oh said Theodore. I forgot to empty the water from my tank. No wonder I've been going so slow lately. It's a good thing you noticed, Fodak. Thanks. As he watched Theodore move away, Fodak said to himself, Part of a team? Oh, that's another thing that's special for me to be. But which one is the most special for me? That evening, all the tugs were at the great ocean dock, snug as water bugs in a jug. All except for one. Fodak was just floating quietly by himself. What's the matter, Fodak? called Emily. Oh, I'm just making sure everyone is tied to the dock, answered Fodak. He always made sure the other tugs were safe and secure before he went to sleep. Just then, they heard a big vroom, vroom noise. It was George racing his engine the way he always did before he went to sleep. Just to let the whole harbor know that he was going off duty. Fodak was so confused about what his V word should be, he couldn't sleep. Hank said the most special thing a tug could be was smart, but Fodak didn't think he was really that smart. George said being strong was the best thing, but Fodak knew he wasn't as strong as George. Emily said being a good worker was best, and Theodore said it was being part of a team. But as Fodak stared at his sleeping friends, he didn't feel like part of a team at all. In fact, he felt very different from the other tugs. Everyone else is special, he thought to himself. Except me. I'll be the only V-tug in the whole world without a name. Fodak decided to check on the other tugboats one last time. He noticed something shiny, and it seemed to be coming from George. As Fodak floated closer and closer, it grew bigger and bigger. And he thought he heard a crackling sound. And then he saw a terrible sight. Fire. The old orange crates in George's lifeboat were filled with flames. Now it's a good thing that Fodak has special equipment to fight fires. And with his special siren on full blast, soon all the other tugs were wide awake. They were very frightened. Help! cried George. Help! My lifeboat's on fire! My lifeboat's on fire! he shouted. As big and strong as he was, George couldn't put out a fire by himself. Emily and Hank were afraid to get too close. Of course, tugs aren't supposed to go near fires. George's lifeboat was filled with flames. Soon, the fire might spread, and then it could hurt George. What should we do? cried Theodore. What should we do? For once, Theodore didn't have any good ideas. George the Valiant was now George the Afraid. The other tugs watched helplessly. It seemed there was nothing anyone could do to save their friend. Suddenly, the tugs heard a strange sound. Hey, said Hank. It's snowing. Snow, said Emily, in the summer. Sure enough, it seemed like snow was falling from the sky. Then the tug saw that the snow was coming from Fodok. 
He was spraying special firefighting foam with his fire hose. Yay, shouted Hank. Fodok to the rescue. Soon Fodok's special spray had the fire completely out. Hooray, shouted Theodore. George is saved. It was just like a snowstorm, said Emily. And it did look a little like a snowstorm with Fodok's firefighting foam all over everything. And there's a snowman, laughed Theodore. They all laughed. Even George had to smile. But underneath, what made him the happiest was that his watchful friend Fodok had saved him from the awful fire. The next morning, the tugs and pilots were all gathered at the great ocean tug and salvage company dock. The dispatcher and the pilot boats looked very serious. The tugs noticed that Fodok had a big cloth covering his back. George was worried that Fodok might have been hurt fighting the fire, and George knew the fire had been his fault. I know I should have listened when Fodok told me about those sparks, he said sadly. That was very careless of you, George, said the dispatcher in a stern voice. Then the dispatcher turned to Fodok. Do you think Fodok's okay? whispered Hank. We've just finished putting on Fodok's new V-word, announced the dispatcher. I wonder what it is, said Fodok quietly. There's nothing special about me. Maybe it's because you're such a good firefighting tug, said Theodore. The tugs all held their breath as the cloth was taken off. when they saw the beautiful bright letters of Fodok's new name catch the morning sunlight. Emily was the first to read it. Fodok the Vigilant, she said. But what does vigilant mean? asked Hank. It means someone who's always watching out for others, announced the dispatcher. Just like Fodok. The tugs all gave a great cheer. Hooray for Fodak the Vigilant, they called out together. What a great special thing to be. The Vigilant, said Fodak proudly. He always watches out for everything, yelled Hank, as if he had just thought of it. Then Fodak noticed that the tugs were giggling. It's so funny, he wondered. Well, Fodak hadn't been watching when the big white seagull had sat down, right there on his brand new, very special name. Fodok the Vigilant. You know, I thought of that name myself. Because Fodok and I are a lot alike. We keep a very sharp eye on everything that goes on here in the Big Harbor. And if any of you out there want to be harbor masters yourselves one day, well, you're going to have to practice and practice watching and looking at everything very carefully, okay? Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time.